Hello YouTube, DreamRJ here. Uh, well, I'm G I'm DreamRJ. Uh, I just thought I'd do a video for a hammer tutorial about me making a map from a map from scratch. So uh, yeah, <laughs> why not? Let's give it a go. So it will be it will be like a tutorial. So obviously, if if I I might make mistakes as I go along, but you know just. It's just like for a basic map I'll be I'll be creating. <coughs> so first thing we need to create a start a new map in Hammer. So this is the Hammer edi editor. For those of you who haven't seen or used it before, I know it's I know it's very old now, and you know it's. <laughs> It was this really old hammer editor, but people still use it uh, to to make maps for various Valve games. So yeah, so this is like the 3D view, and you use this and you press the Z button to move about, and you just use the W A Z S W A S D keys to move move the camera around. And then you've got these three windows here, and you've got like the top, top view, side view, and the front view. So when I when I start building the room, you'll start seeing uh, how these are used and how you use these. So first thing we need to do is we need to click this tool here, and that's the brush creation tool. And we also need to change the grid size, so I'll go down to 32. And then basically we're just going to create a 512. I oh know I'll do a 256 actually. A 256 grid size. And this here, this is called this can you see this like red and blue and green thing? That's the origin basically. And that's basically the map's starting point. So basically what you need to do to cut is if you if you're gonna have lasers in the in the map then you need to build the room of it uh, above it. So let's move this up a bit. We'll go about, yeah, that'll do. We'll do it there. And then, because it's got some, there's a bugging game, and what happens is, if you've got a laser in the map, you, you'll get a little red, a little red, uh, you know, <laughs> laser point at the origin, which is a bit odd, but yeah. So we're just gonna create this as 32 width. I'm going to go to the texture browser by clicking here on the browse and then we'll find some textures. So let's just filter it. So if you click on the keyword, sorry, and then just click on Portal 2, then you'll get a, all the Portal 2 textures. will show up in here. So this, this is this floor, so we'll use this one. And then we just right click and create. And there's the first 256 by 256 floor panel. So then what you do here is you click this selection tool. And also if you press the X on the keyboard, that'll make it so it's selectable. So you get like the, the right bits around it. And you press the X button. And then basically what we're gonna do, we want to copy this brush. So we press the shift button keep hold of the shift button and then click on the t on the top view and then just slide it across like that and then that duplicates it and then we do that again and again and this is and, and what you can do now is once you've got this you've got four different brushes and then what you can do is you can do this you can create crazy room shapes Okay, it's not really that crazy, but <laughs> it's not too bad. So then that's the floor done. And then what we need to do is we need to create the walls. But first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all these bushes actually and make it our node wall. So you select the texture tool, this is the texture tool here. And then just go node wall. I should have done that first, I'm sorry, I was being stupid. Okay, and then we'll go to the texture tool again, and then we'll just click on these two, on the top surfaces, 
which is these here. So to select all of them, you, you need to select one and then press the control button. And keep hold of the control button until you've got all these faces ticked. And then go back to the browse, delete the node bar, and then we'll go back to that texture we used before. It's near the top, wasn't it? Is that the one? Yeah, that was the one. And then just press apply, and then that will retexture just that surface. And then on the outside, it's our node bar. Okay, anyway, so now we've done that. <laughs> right, now what we need to do is we need to create the, the walls. So what we do is we go to the side view and we just drag it up like that. And that and we press shift, sorry, so shift and drag it up. And then we've cloned that brush. And then what we need to do is we need to rotate this brush. Well, this is the way I, I make the walls anyway. So then we rotate the brush. Let's just change the grid size because it's a bit off grid there. Okay. In fact, I should fix that. So let's just do that and go back to 32. Just bear with me a second. Just sorting this little issue out. There we go. Okay. So now we've got a wall there. So then what we do is we basically just shift in using the shift button and drag in to, cl to clone the brushes. And then we're just creating the walls. I always do it like that, so I've got like so they they join and there's nothing there's nothing there. That one needs to be like that there. And as you can see, we've got a node bar showing. So all you do is you just get the, the the texture tool and you just click that, and then you press the control button, the the out button. Sorry, you press the out button, and then it'll just basically fill that fill that brush in there, fill that node drawing. in. So I'll just quickly get this done. I mean, sometimes, you know, you w I, w I wish that <laughs> making the brushes was so much faster, but we're only as fast as our, you know, our ages and ourselves. <laughs> but anyway. So once you've done this laborious stuff, we can get on to some other stuff in a minute after I've done the roof, like adding lights and whatnot. Okay, so that's the that's the walls done. Oh, I've got another brush there, so get the texture tool, select that brush, press the Alt key. Basically, what the Alt key does, it it, it just when you press the Alt key and keep hold of the Alt key. It, once you've selected that, it, it just basically keeps the texture aligned. It's just an easier way of, it's a good a hammer tip. It keeps the texture perfectly aligned. As you can see, it's all the textures completely aligned. But obviously we've got a floor texture on the, on the wall. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to change this texture anyway. So we'll go to the browse and then we need to find a wall texture. So let's find a nice one. Should we use this one? I didn't apply, did I? <laughs> okay, let's see what that looks like a minute. Okay, we'll use that one for now. So you just press the out, and then you just do this, going all the way on the walls, the walls. There we go. Nearly done. Okay, done. Oh, should I should just check that. Yeah, I did all that once. Okay. And then what we need to do actually before before going any further, let's save it. So we'll just save it. Oh, what if I saved it as? <laughs> oh, it's not popped up yet. It's a bit slow. It's been a bit slow today. 
So we'll just save it. Alright, so say you're doing a co-op map. If you're doing a co-op map, then you need to, when, when you're saving it, you need to do a MP. So it's MP underscore. And that's that's what you need to do, and then you need um, and, and you need to do co-op like that and underscore again, and then you can type what name you want for the map map, map name. But obviously that it, you can put any in it; it doesn't make any difference. You can name it whatever you want. This is just the file name, but you can actually then use a completely different name for the actual map itself in when you publish it into the Steam Workshop. So that's not really a big deal. But what we're going to do is this is just going to be a single player, so it's a bit simpler to make. So we just go sp underscore and then just whatever you want to call it. So we'll just call it uh, tutorial map. And then just press save. And then we've got a save. So then if, it, if hammer crashes, it's very important because hammer does crash it. It does seem to crash a lot sometimes, and if you're in the middle of stuff, it's always important to always save every, every time you alt, alt, add something or change something, because it gets really annoying when you crash sometimes, and you then you have to redo things. So we've got the floor, we've got the walls. So what we do now is to create the ceiling, we can just do a quick cheat. So we can select all the floors, the floor, and now all we need to do is we just need to shift, press the shift button, and drag it up to the top like that. And then what we can do is we can just grab the texture tool, select on the node drawer, and then just press Yeah, so select the node drawer and then just press out and just do this in node R. Yes. And then what we need to do is we need to go and find a roof ceiling texture. So we shall go and find a roof ceiling texture. Where is a roof ceiling? We can also just type ceiling, so S E I L. They're not good, so we'll just change this to we'll just delete the portal too, so it's empty, and then that'll come with all ceiling textures this way. Okay, so we'll just use this one. Oops. There we go. So we've got it selected and then we just do that. Right click on the ceiling and then we've got it. So as you can see the floor and the ceiling texture looks pretty similar to be honest. It's you can't really see the difference. But it is it, it that is a floor and that is a ceiling. So there is a basic room. So now we need lighting in this room. So what we'll do f next is we'll do some lighting. So what we do to create a lighting is we need to go and get <coughs> funk uh, a prop static. So we're creating a prop static. Because we need to get the model for the light. And then we just click on. So but first of all, we'll do this first. So we need to disable shadows. Yes. And then that's it. And then we need to click on, double click this world model, where, it's, where it says world model, which was there. And it'll open this model browser up. And then we need to find the light, so let's just type light in, and we should find it. It's been a while since I've used this model, so I forgot the name of it. There they are. Okay, so this is the one we want because this is just the basic Portal 2 light cover. So we've got a medium size, we've got a large size, and then we've got a, a, a small one. So we'll, we'll just go for the medium, and then we'll, we don't need as many of them then. So we've got this model in the world. It's a bit weird. So what we need to do is we just need to move it in and rotate it. So let's rotate it now. We can see the front of it. Okay. 
this model is such a pain to use because it's so thin so the side view is very hard so you can't really move it using the side view so you've got to use it on the on the on the front view so you can move it around but it'll be a bit easier to move once I've got the brush in place so what we need to do then is we need to create a brush so let's just rotate it actually so it's going this way and we'll put it in the top of the room so it's at the top like that so then what we need to do here we've got this brush here and then we just need to copy this brush so we'll shift it and pull it outwards and then we'll resize it so we'll go to the bottom on the front view and then we'll drag it so it's behind that can you see so there's that brush we've just created and there's the light model so what then we need to do is we need to just lower this like this so then we can see through okay and then what we need to do is we need to retexture this this brush surface so if we go in using the camera to press W and go in and then we can use the texture tool select this surface click to browse and what we need to do is we need to type light into the filter and then we'll see these three, these three here we've got lights so you've got a, a light panel cool light panel neutral and light panel warm we'll just use a cool for now and then just click apply and this this bit is the important bit this is how you do the brightness the texture scale so if you want it brighter you do it you do it higher so we'll do this as a 0.75 you can go up to 5 you can go up to 10 I, I think but it's best just to I, I think it's not 0.75 will be perfect because then we won't need as many then to light the room up and then just press apply and then we've got that and then what we need to do is we need to drag it into place like this and then what I'll also do is I'll change the grid size to go to go to 4 and then we just need to do this and leave leave like a, a gap of eight eight units and then what we need to do is we need to somehow <laughs> drag this into position this is where it comes a hard bit this model is a pain to use seriously it is so what I could actually do is I could cheat here so I could actually do this and select it together and then pull it backwards like that and there we have it in place and as you can see that isn't aligned so what we need now is we can just do this and now another tip is we can group this like this uh, some some people put a uh, play clips and invisible textures around these lights I don't really see a purpose for doing that so I just don't really bother doing that <coughs> so that's just got a texture there weird okay so as you can see we've got a we've got a gap now here and here so we need to fill this gap up otherwise the map's going to leak when you can when you try and compile the map so what you do is you just I'm just gonna I've just selected this this roof ceiling panel uh, brush and I'm shift dragging to copy it and I've just dragged it over like this and I'm just resizing I think I'm going to just change back to the grid size to 16 because it'll be a bit easier so we've just created that so we filled that gap in so then what we need to do is we need to do it for the side there that little, that little hole there so just drag it out like that so by pressing the shift button again sorry and then we, there we go I've just resized it so it's a square and we just drag it down like this and that's how we do the light and that's how we, 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 we fill the thing in so then what I can do is because I've done that I can group this and then I can copy and paste I can use this again you see so I can just multiply it so because it's easier when you group when you group an item to to copy and paste things and duplicate things so we've got one light there we'll do another light over in the other corner over here So we'll do it there like that 
and then what we can do we just need as you can see because of this brush it's overlapping so it's just a simple fix just select this brush and drag it down like that and that's two lights now in this area so let's do one more where should I put it I'll put it there and there okay I'll put them there and there okay so select this and then we'll move this like that you know what I think I'll change it because I'm using the big model and, and I haven't got much room I'll, I'll the medium model for that I'll just pull it here instead It'll be a bit easier. So now we're doing is we're resizing that rod again like this. Right, so as you can see the no drawer on this side is in the wrong area. So what you need to do now is you need to go to click on the solids and just so click on the solids and then click on like that there, you've got like groups, objects, solids, so you click solids, and then that un that that basically ungroups it a minute so you can select this one. And then you just basically move it to the other side like so and then we can just go back to groups and that'll be grouped still as you can see <coughs> so let's just quickly do this other side here and then it's done okay jobs are good then so now we've got a, a room with lights So now we need an entrance, I suppose, and, and a place start point. So there is, there is a, a f instances that you use for the that you that you can use, but you can actually make your own a uh, place start if you want. It's it's very it's not too hard to do. Uh, but uh, in this occasion, we'll just use the play the instances because it's it's pretty pretty simple. So you just go into the instance tool here. This is the instance tool, and then you just type it in this box, and we want a funk instance. So funk underscore instant instance. Click that, and then just pull it into the world by clicking in the t in the 3D model, and that places it into the world. You can also place it by right clicking, uh, by clicking uh, in in the map, and you can do it a different way as well, but. I very rarely do it this way. I just usually like to click it into this into the 3D model view world. It's a bit easier. So we've got this. So let me just double click it. This is where I have to remember where the <laughs> instances was. Assuming it's been a while. So we go to the instances. And then we need the start. Rooms, which I can't remember which folder it was in. You know what? I think I'll just cheat. <laughs> no, I won't cheat. <laughs> I need to do it properly, don't I? Because it's a tutorial. <laughs> okay. Uh, instances. Elevator scenes was it in that one? Nope. I f I've completely forgot which one it was, which photo it was. Makes me look a bit bad now, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, transitions was it? Don't remember. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, I'm just going to quickly cheat so I can remember what the file name was. So I'm going to open up an old map, that, another map that I made. So we'll open Fly a Day. Fly a day one. There it is. So just open. You can also have multiple maps open at the time, but you've got to be careful because some it can it can cause Hammer to crash sometimes. So don't don't overburden Hammer by opening quite a lot of maps up in in once. So as you can see, you can minimize. And there's there's the one that I've, I'm working on. Uh, just save and then minimize 
and then we can go back to oh that's the same one <laughs> and that's the one I just opened so yeah this is a this is a map that I've made a uh, card flyer day it's actually published on on Steam Workshop with my name Lucky RJ if you want to have a look and yeah so what we need to do is we're looking for the for the spa for the for this we need this basically so this one was called so it's in instances turbine elevator that's what it was <laughs> anyway so while I'm here I might as well just cheat so what we need to do we need both of these with this two different instances we need so because they're already in position and place so I'm, I'll just copy and paste them so copy and then minimize and then we'll go back to this one I can delete this this now because I don't need it because I've just done that so as you can see I've just pasted it into the world so what we need to do is is this is the entrance here if you look on the top and where my mouse is this is the entrance point so what we need to do is we need to rotate this so it's so we, we click and then we get the rotation so we can rotate it and then we need to use the roll middle the mouse rolling wheel if you've got a mouse rolling wheel in the middle of your mouse to zoom out so you can get a bigger view and then we need to put it into position like this and then let me see where it is in the world. So we just zoom out so we can see where it is. So it's actually above at the moment. So we need to pull it downwards. Like this. So as you can see, we can start to see it now. It's just below this light. But to be honest, I think we need to, s we need to move it to the other side actually because the light is there and it might cause some problems. So what we'll do is we'll just move it over to the other wall and rotate it again like so and we'll pull it in the center of the wall so it's center so we've got 64 on each side and then this is 128 so we need to pull it down by one more 32 block there we go done okay so as you can see we've got this in now but now you can see that we need to we need to cut a hole in so we can get access to it so what we do is we click this and then we just basically resize in so we just do that resize in and then pressing the shift button to copy it to the other side so that fills that little hole in so as you can see it's overlapping a bit so what we'll do is we'll cheat and we will pull this back a bit so it's there okay so it's flush against the the walls and then what also what you can do is is, is a, there's a there's a there's a little tool here what you can do so you can click these instances and then you can change the view to normal and then when you when they're not selected you can see you can see them better so you don't see all that orangeness and it gets a bit confusing so now what we need to do is we need to create another bush ceiling so we'll just do this and then just lift it up to there okay and then as you can see we've got a hole there so we need to actually fill that hole in so we'll just fill this hole in like this perfect so the the thing with these instances is I'll just quickly explain there's two instances and you've got you've got the main instance where it's where it's the logic so the arrival elevator logic and it's in the turbine elevator uh, folder in the instances folder in turbine elevator and that's the logic basically and that's the actual sh the thing that moves up and down that's that's that this that's the most important bit and then and that's that one and that's a vmf and then the other one is the one that i want to change because i don't want the destroyed theme you see because i've got the destroyed theme as you can see destroy destructed base i want to change this base 
So we'll just go far there. Arrival elevator base. And then just click apply. And then that'll just re, re add it so it's the normal one, not the destroyed one. So as you can see, it's all perfectly cool and not destroyed anymore. It, it can be a bit of a pain to to get this flush with this other instance, but it's it's pretty easy because you just and it's it's, it's it can it, when, once you get used to it, it, it isn't too bad. You just have to make sure that this that when you've selected this this uh, instance, which is the logic instance, uh, to bring it flush. So you can see how it's how it's glitching because of this player clip. You just need to get that player clip flush with the fl with the with the floor of this instance, so it's completely flush, and that lines it up perfectly then to the middle. As long as you're on a, a grid size of like 16 or 32, it's it's not too bad. It's pretty it, it's pretty easy to line it up. <coughs> so I, I won't bother uh, sh showing that. <laughs> uh, so, as you can see, we've got some node draw textures showing. So we'll just quickly do this and quickly do that. So we've got the textures perfect. I might actually change that floor because they've got a different floor texture there. So I'll change this floor texture to, to coincide with the one that's in the model browser. So let's just see what it's using. So we'll just double click this, go into edit the instance so I can see which texture it was. So it's the black floor metal 001D. Okay. So then we'll just close that because we don't need it. Black floor metal 01D, that's the one. It's just so it, so it keeps it in, in in line with this one, so it keeps it all the textures looking the same, just for the consistency of issue reasons really. So as you can see, that's that's the entrance in. You can also add a door as well, you know, like a a, a chamber door if you if you want to, but I, I won't do that in this tutorial. I'll just I just do as a basic map. From you know, so you can see that it's a basic mapping <laughs> from scratch. Okay, first of all, actually, what we'll what we'll do next is we need to add some uh, more instances into the map uh, for for PTI instances for the Steam Workshop. We need these instances for for the map to be able to be put into the Steam Workshop. So this is very important that we do this. So what we need to do is. I'm just having a look in this one because it's been a while since I've done it, you know, manually. So I'm just trying to remember which one it was. So it's there it is. So it's the global PTI entities. Okay. So as you can see, this this is this is, uh, this is what we need. It's a PTI entities one. So what you do is you. I just do it actually, so I know what it is. And what's this one? This is the arrival. Yeah, we need this one as well. The arrival entities. So let's just copy this name. <coughs> Go back to the map. It's been a while since I, so I'm a bit wusty, as you can imagine. <laughs> uh, because a lot of the time I just cheat and I just copy and paste from previous maps to make it really easier to to build the maps then. Uh, instead of because I'm doing a tutorial, I'll do it. I'll do this one properly. So you go to the uh, entity creation tool and you just click on. So you, we want a funk instance. And then what we need to do because we're outside of the map, we need to just click on this wall here because you need to cl click it on the wall. And then you can see we just created it there. So then we double click it. Click on do the name actually, we'll do the fix up name, so we type in, uh, because I've got it pasted, I've just pasted it, so we need it to be called arrival underscore ent, and then just click apply, and then we need to go to file name, and then we need to go and find where it is, so was it 
appeared to be editor. It, oh, actually, maybe it was in the turbine too. No, it wasn't in there. Was it in there? Let me just <clears throat> I hate looking through folders, it's such a pain. So let's let's just see which folder it was in. Transitions. <laughs> of course, logical. <laughs> we'll get there eventually, won't we? So double click this and then we'll go to instances, transitions. Oh, it's not even in there now. Interesting. Maybe it was that one. Was it this one? I can't remember. Seriously. My my memory. My memory. I think it's my age. <laughs> I think it's me age. Getting old. Rival. Departure. Transition. Oh my god. It was. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny actually, isn't it? What am I doing now? I'm being stupid. Okay. So instances, transitions, arrival, departure, transitions. Okay. Apply. Okay, and then we've got the into the world. So what we need to do is we just need to move it away from the wall. So we'll put it there like this. Okay. So we'll cheat now. So what we'll do oh we won't cheat. So now we'll go to this again, click the answer to Put it on top of this this one we've just created. We can see it there. This red dot. Double click it. And then we need to call this one PTINs. And then double click the, the VMF instances. Peter is a. Uh, it's Oh, actually, I think it was in the made folder. Oh, my God. My memory again. I'm sorry about this. My memory. I clicked the wrong one again. Where is it? It is there. Global PTIN. So that was it. So it's in the P2E editor one. There it is. Global PTINs open. And then apply. And now we've got these these instances that we needed in the map. And then we can that means we can put it into the Steam Workshop and publish it. Uh, another another one we can use is there's there's a fog a fog air controller one we can use. But I'm not going to be using fog in this map, so we don't really need that one. Uh, and that also, and it also has quite a, of, a lot of other entities in it inside it. Uh, okay, so that's that's the main things done. So then, what we'll do is we'll put the exit in, and we'll just keep this a very very simple simple map. So we'll put the exit in. So we need to So I'm doing that little cheat again, <laughs> I'm afraid. So as you can see these two air uh, things again. So they've got that there and that one there. You need to you need to get both of these because it's very important that you get both of these. And then I'm just gonna cheat again and press copy. 
I'll, I'll when, once I've got them copied, I'll I'll obviously I'll I'll, I'll say what I'll, I'll tell you the names of them. Okay. Let's see where it is. It's right up there. Wow. So we need to put it all the way down to here. Okay. So it's flush with the wall. And I think it's on this wall here. Yeah, that's the one. Now what we do is we just lift it up. And there it is. And then what we need to do is we need to create the walls again. So we'll just shift, drag that brush down, move it, and then resize it there, like so. So it's 64 in, in length, and shift, copy it across, and there we go. And then what we need to do is get this, the texture tool, select this wall here, right, press Alt, and click that one. Same again, out, out, and there we go. And then what we need to do is we need to do this. Because there was a little gap. So we just shifted the same gain, the same the same unique, the same the same method to to copy. So as you can see we've got the destroyed theme again in this in this instance. So this one is obviously the departure elevator instance. So we want to change this, so we'll just double click. I want to change this to the not destructed. So we need to find the base. There we go. And then just open and then apply. And that's that done. So yeah, this one is called the the departure elevator, and it's just a funk instance. So like I said, so it's just so create the funk instance, go to instances, turbine elevator, and what have you. I've also you can you also need to put a name departure underscore elevator for the departure elevator, and the same with the arrivals. The arrival elevator, as you can see, it's got a fixed on name arrival level elevator. Let's just see if this one had a name, I can't remember. Yeah, Arrival Elevator Logic. So you need to put a name in, in this one, in the Logic one, is Arrival underscore Elevator underscore Logic. And then the same with the Departure, the middle bit on the, on the middle one. That'll be Departure Elevator Logic, like that. Okay. So that is a, a, the basics of creating a simple room with the entrance and exits and lighting. So now what we'll do, we'll just add a quick, a quick simple uh, puzzle and some portable surfaces. So we'll click the enter to creation tool and we'll go for a prop button or a prop floor button a floor button. <sighs> okay. And then you just you select the floor button and then drop it into the onto into the 2D view onto the floor. So as you can see it's a bit weirdly up off, off the floor, it's floating a bit. So what we do is we just we're just selecting it and then we just go to the front view. And then we're just dragging it down. So, but we'll, go, we'll change the grid size. So this is how you change the grid size. These two buttons next to the 3D. So you press this button, this one here. So we just go down to to four. I'll do. And just drag it down. Actually, we need to go down a bit more to grid size two. It tells you what the grid size is. Snap on grid two at the bottom, right at the bottom on the bottom right. And now you can see it's flush with the floor. But we'll need to do it again. So we'll go down to one because it overlaps, so we'll just have to have it under the floor like that. It has to be like that because otherwise, I'll show you. 
if it's flush like that you can see like there's a bit of metal here and it glitches you can see it if you move around it you can see it overlapping and glitching a bit so I always just put it like this and then it stops that from being visible in the game so we've got a button actually let's go back to the grid size 16 and then we can put it into position properly okay so now we've just put the button in the corner there like so so obviously this button can't do anything at the moment because we haven't got any outputs yeah this is a good one actually if you want to change the model of this button to if you if you're doing a destroyed a destroyed map you can change the model here by double clicking it and then you can just put uh, you can just change the skin there's a skin you can change uh, oh that's just for the light when you yeah but you can actually just do uh, I forgot the name of it but Let's just type button in. Oh, got that little glitch. Typing backwards. <laughs> Funny. There it is. So as you can see, you've got two models there for destroyed theme. When you, if you're doing a destroyed theme, so as you can see, that's a, like broken button, and that's another version of a broken button. But we don't need to do that. We'll just keep it with this one. Okay, so let's, should we add a cube dropper? Let's add a cube dropper in. So we need to go to the instances and create a funk instance. And click it on the ceiling because we want it at the ceiling. So we've got it there. And then we need to call this give this a name so we'll just call it dropper one double click the fmf name and then we need to click on instances and we need to click on the gameplay folder because this is where all the cube droppers are as you can see i've got i've got loads of different things this is an entity the one i actually made myself i made uh, three multiple cube droppers <laughs> it was it was a pretty big challenge that i made that when i made that uh, but we'll just do a cube dropper multiple normal we'll just use a cube drop and multiple normal click apply and then add it to the world and then we just need to move it and drag it up in this side view so as you can see it's going up and up and up <laughs> like so The way I like to add these into the into my map is I always like to have them above the the, the ceiling because they're a lot easier to to put into position. At the moment, I'm on a 32 grid size, so it's easier for it to snap in. This is this this is the inside. So this this can you see this square box here? This is what we need to cut this brush to. So we need to cut this tool in a minute. It will, I'll show you this tool now. This is a cool tool. So as you can see, we've got this this guide box here that we need to cut around. So you can see this bush here, and this is the thing. So what we do is let, let's let's make this a bit easier. So we'll so we're going we're going to hide everything else in the map. So to do that, we just select the two things that we don't want hidden, and then we just press Control and hide like that so when when you're selecting multiple items let's just show that again so unhide everything so when you want to select multiple items you click things and you press the control button keep hold of the control button and then you can basically just select what you want selected and then 
that's how you do it. So, and then once once you've selected what you need to select, you unpress the control button, and you can just press control and H or hide them. Select that that you what you've just selected. You can just press H and see if you just wanted to hide these. So I'll show you that as well quickly. So say I wanted to hide these, so I select them, control to select them both, and then just press hide, and that hides them then. It's very useful to hide things because when you're working and, and when maps get really complica complex and complicated and there's loads of bushes, loads of entities, loads of models, it can get hard to see things in these 2Ds and 2Ds views and stuff. So it's very it's very useful to hide things and, and what have you. But what I usually do is I just usually just hide everything else and just select what I want to have so it makes it so much as you can see it's so much easier to see now because there's only these two objects visible so you, you, you press this brush and then you press this a uh, clipping tool this is called the clipping tool this is a very cool tool and basically what you want to do is you want can you need to remember, use this as the guide so you need to select it from there and then drag it there and as you can see we've got a red there that's the, the red bit is what it will discard what it will delete and the right is what it will keep the right part but we want to keep both so we just press the clip button again and then that's that's just flipped it so now it's saying it wants to get that but we don't we want it to keep both so we just press this clip tool until we see it all, all right and then once you've done that you just press the enter button like that and that's cut that into where that line is there because we need this we need to follow this line so then what we do unselect this by go back to the selection tool click and then we just can select this surface because we've already clicked this we don't need to click that again so I need to press the clip tool again and do that press enter again and then that's created that and then and then you go back to this click and we need to select this this part here now and then press clipping tool again and then we've just created that one enter clip click this one do the same again and now as you can see we have now got this hole like so we've created a hole <coughs> I always prefer to do it this way because uh, I just think it looks it, it it looks nicer when it's when it's above above the above the thing. So as you can see, we've got we've got ha a, a, a hole. So we need to fill this hole in. So it's very simple. We just need to create some bushes. So we'll just select this this bush here and move it upwards. So we've cloned it, pressing the shift button, and then we'll just resize it so it's only 32 in width, as you can see, 32. And then all we'll all we do then is actually we'll rotate it because of the texture is on the wrong side. So as you can see, I've just rotated it, and now the texture's there. But that's a ceiling texture, so we'll change this texture in a minute. So then all we need to do is we just need to drag it up. And I move it out a little bit because, as you can see, it was it was clipping. This model was clipping into the wall, so we'll just drag it up. Oops, undo a minute, like so. Resize it. Basically, the aim here is just, and, and because this is outside the map, you can be, you, you don't have to be perfectly neat, neat about this uh, at all. You know, because it's it, all you were doing basically is filling, filling this this gap in. So we don't have to be perfectly neat because no one will see properly, really, because it's high up. Okay, so as you can see, I've still got another gap at the top, and I'll fill that in in a second. 
I just need to resize these bushes. Oops, I think I've just resized the wrong thing. Because it was overlapping there. Yep, that one's overlapping, so we'll do this one. Oops. There we go. Perfect. Okay, to fill this to fill this gap in, we're gonna have to just basically do that again. But we'll just drag it up, shift it. Thirty two. Resize to sixteen. And then just basically fill that hole in there like this. It is a bit messy way of doing this, but it it works, and because it's outside, no one really sees that. There we go, and now we've got that gap filled in, so now it won't leak. So as you can see, we've got no dwarf showing. So what we need to do is we just need to get the texture tool and select the, we'll just use the roof and cheat. Okay, and that's, that's that done. Actually, we need to do this up here. So we're just getting the texture tool and doing that. Okay, actually, as you can see, we need to we need to line this up actually. So we just need to move about with the camera, select this instance, and we just need to move it up slightly. No, we need to change the grid size. So we'll change it back to eight. I think that's flush now. Yep, perfect. That's flush now with the with the, with the ceiling. Okay, done. And what we do, we just press the unhide, the, the U button, uh, the letter U on the keyboard to unhide everything. And then that unhides everything in the map. So we'll save this now. And then we will go to the, the, the floor button. And then we'll go to the outputs, add the output on pressed. And then we'll get this little selection tool. And then we just select this, drop a one. And then you'll get some some instances here. Trigger auto respawn. The auto respawn basically, want it, once it's triggered, if if the cube gets fizzled, it'll automatically respawn. I very rarely use that option, so I just use this one. And just click apply. Uh, don't worry when it goes if it goes red, it still works in game. Don't worry about that. It's just it's just a weird because it's an instance and it has problems sometimes, but it does work fine. Don't worry about that. And that's that. So that's how you make so so when you stand on this button now, that that this will spawn the cube. So that's basically a basic a basic map with a basic button and a cube dropper. So let's 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 show you a portable surface. So to create a portable surface, it's very simple. We've got the bushes, so let's cut this up into four one to eight blocks. So we'll just get the clip tool. Actually, I think I'm going to hide this bush because it's a bit. It was a bit hard to see. So we've got the selection tool. Get this tool, the clipping tool again. And all we're doing here is we go into the to this view here, 
and we're just selecting enter so we're going straight down the middle to cut it into four and then straight down this other middle and there we go four one to eight blocks as you can see we've got one to eight block there one to eight block there one to eight one to eight one to eight one to eight and then press the u button again on the keyboard to unhide everything so you can see we've got four blocks now so this this basically means we can texture now different textures on this wall to make the room look a lot better as well we can put the other, we can even put the other textures on the other other four blocks it's up to you, you it's all free design you can you can change it from 30 you can have different size blocks but you all it's very important to stay on grid so it's always in multiples of two four six eights tens don't go into the ones threes because that just that is bad mapping that is totally not not good uh, for, for creating maps you always need to be on on grid sizes you know but it's the, the, the ideal is when you're working generally is 32 grid size 32 unit grid size so let's delete this and then just find a portable surface so let's just go to portal 2 again in the in the keywords and we just need to scroll down to find the portable surfaces so as you can see these are like signs and everything so which one should we use? we'll just use There we go, we'll use this one. So as you can see that's created a portable surface. So you can also change it so you can go top and that can change it so that's just made basically textured this now so it's perfect. Or you can press center. You can mess about with this, it's it's pretty cool tool to use. And you can so if you're having some texture realigning issues you can change it. Uh, and so on and so forth. And then to 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 if I wanted to put another one there, I just press the Alt key and then just click this one. There we go. There, there's two portable surfaces. So what we'll do is that we'll we'll actually do the same as so we'll go to the clipping tool and we'll just quickly cut this. So we've got two blocks of one two eight here as well. So we'll click this, clip again, done. And then click the texture tool, select this portable surface and make them portable, like so. Okay, so it looks like it's becoming like a little small puzzle now, doesn't it? So let's add a let's add a, add a fizzler shall we so we'll have a fizzler coming all the way across this 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 big massive gap this big area here so it's all the way stretching across so it's cutting the room into two then isn't it you know as you can see i'm just making this up as i go along <laughs> so but this this is that's what hammer's like uh, you, this this is what's good about it you can you can be free and and you can you can create things as you go along some people don't like doing it this way some people have different ways of th and styles of mapping and creating puzzles and putting stuff together but as it's just like a basic tutorial map puzzle it's it's not really a big deal uh, so we need to create a funk instance <sighs> D 
is instances for for these things, but you can it's it's not that hard to make them yourself. It's it's pretty straightforward. So because we want it on this world, we'll just click it here like this, and then we just double click it like so. So then what we need to do is we need to go into the file name instance. Oh, I've just messed this. Sorry, I'm being dumb. I'm being dumb. Ignore me. Ignore me. It's not a funk instance. We need it to be a prop static. Sorry about that. <laughs> a prop dynamic, sorry. So we need to type a prop dynamic. Prop dynamic. Double click. And then we'll put it on the wall. And then double click it. We won't give it a name at the moment. Uh, go into the world model. That was it. And we need to find... I forgot the name of it. I don't even know what the name is. Oh, there we go. That's what it was. Okay, dynamic. I think that's the one where it animates. Yeah, this is the animating one. And then we've just got a basic one that doesn't animate. I usually just cheat and use the Fizzler model because the dynamic version is a bit of a pain. You then have to open and close it with the set animation option. I mean, it's not a problem, but it just looks nice in game when, when it goes on enough to, to, to put them in the game. We'll just use this for, for all just because it's the easiest option. So as you can see, we've got this model in and we've just, we, what, basically what you need to do, can you see this here? This is the model. This is what needs to be flush against this, this, this bush here, this wall. So as you can see, it's to totally, totally flush against this wall because I'm on a, of the grid size that I'm on. So what we need to do, we need to also pull this downwards to the floor, like so. And then also what we need to do is we need to double press shift and drag it up because we need to multiply it to reach it to the ceiling because we need two of them because there's only one, one size in these. It's just a default size. You can't change the size of the models, I'm afraid which is a bit of a pain, but it wouldn't look very good. If you resize the model, it would probably look stretched and not very good in game. I just wish Valve would have added, you know, a lot more things. So what I've just done there is I've just uh, selected them two and I've just copied them across to the other side. Uh, so they're totally in line. So that's that bit done. So as you can see, we've got these in place now. Okay. You know what I think I'm going to go all the way. So you know what? I'm going to change the model. Let's use that for model. Why not? It's just for fun. <laughs> A tutorial for fun. So we're using that model now. So what we'll, we'll, we'll have to give this a name in a minute as well anyway. So we'll give this a name in a minute. Uh, now we need to create a brush between this and this and this and this. So what we'll do is we'll actually make it a lot easier. We'll select these, select this wall here, and select this wall and this wall and this bit and the floor so we get an idea of... just so we can have less, li less lines so we can make it a bit easier. So what we need to do is we need to go to the brush creation tool and then in this view here go down to a four grid size and then just go from there and then what we need to do is we need to create it all the way across like this to this wall here like so and as you can see it's actually a thing so just pull it down to there and then up one and the same with the bottom like so but you actually know what we need to do is we need to put it in the middle so it's half and half and then we can copy the brush so as you can see we've got that now and it's perfectly 516 across Oop, it shouldn't be 516 I was thinking that was a bit hard it should be 512 across okay so it's 256, 256 is 512 because it's perfectly on grid. So then what we need to do then is we need to we need to 
actually I'm going to because that's the size of what what's that eight yeah we need this to be less than that so let's do it and then we'll go down to a two quid size like so you know what we need to do this a two actually so we'll make this two in thickness and then go down we, we're gonna have to go to the lowest one quid size only for this though we only need to do this for this but it's it's perfectly fine and then this is but this has got to be a two a two in a two width and then what we need to do is we'll just create the brush so we need it to be for now we'll just use okay there it is so fizzler so that's the left that's the right okay so where's the center so we'll just use the center one just for now just just to create the brush actually no we'll do no draw we'll do no draw okay sorry i'm being dumb no draw create it with no draw so right click create and then we just created this brush we won't copy it down yet because we'll do the first, this this top one and then we'll copy and paste it downwards to because we'll cheat there's no point in doing them twice when you can just copy and paste so we've got this brush so then what we do is we need to split this now because we need to create three separate brushes so we've got a left side of the fizzler and a right side of the fizzler and then the centered fizzler so select this and then what we need to do is we just need to resize this go change the grid size again back to 16 that'll do and then we just need to basically create a brush of 64 units so we just press the shift to copy this brush oh that's actually one to eight it needs to be 64 so as you can see i just created that and then um, pull this there like that and then we can just do this copy and paste copy press the shift so I've cloned it move it to the other side like so oh it's a bit out of line there so we need to go back down to the quid size and then we can put it back into a line mint let's just make sure this one is as well yep perfect okay so as you can see we've got three different brushes and they are all in perfect alignment so then what we do is we need to click the texture tool select this brush here and we'll also select this by, by pressing control so you've selected the face of this one so then we need to do the same so press control and select this face as well so then what we need to do is we need to go to the browse fizzler Uh, left it might be the right on this side but it, it's not really a problem I always, I can I, I always get a bit confused sometimes doing these maybe it's that one I press the center, the, the C, the center, the C means center, B means bottom, T means top, R means right, L means left, and that's just fit. But we don't need to use the fit. I should have used a fit. Okay, yeah, we'll use the fit. Okay, perfect. Okay, so press fit. And then what we need to do is we need to do the center one. So select this brush, and then press control, browse, center fizzler center apply fit and then the same for these two browse right apply fit So then what we need to do is we need to select all of these like so and then we need to treat as one and then fit 
There we go. And that's that. And that's basically joined them all together. It still doesn't look right. Uh, but anyway, we'll just leave it as that because it's just a, a tutorial map. You, you can you can play around with it to, to try and make it to try and get it right. And I always have problems making fizzlers myself. I usually just copy and paste ones that I've already created, so I don't have to redo them. You know, I always found it a pain to read to 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 work to to do it, so I just copy and paste usually because it's easier. So then, what we need to do, we've got this created now. So now, what we need to do is we need to select these bushes by pressing the controls. We've got them all selected. Then, we're on the keyboard, you press Control and T, and then this will bring this will that's basically tied this to an entity. And then, what we need to do is we need to change this entity to a portal cleanser. A portal cleanser there is a trigger portal cleanser uh, change this to yes because we want it visible we don't need to change this disabled and then what we need to do is we need to go into the flags so you've got class info outputs inputs flags and fizz group this groups to to for entities and to it's just not, I'll, I'll explain that maybe in a in a later video another day, another time. Uh, what we need to do is we need to do clients pushables physics objects. I usually just do do everything and I always click pushables physics objects and everything. So that will fizzle cubes. It will fizzle if we add turrets. It will fizzle turrets and so on and so forth. Edit undo because I'm on the one grid size. <laughs> I'm on the one grid size, so just change the grid size back to 16, and then we just selected this, and then we just need to drag it down like this, like so. Uh, actually, it might be at uh, his groups actually. So what you can actually do because we've got two different groups, we could we could we we could name these two different names, but for science we'll just name them both exactly the same. So we just select both by pressing the control button and then double clicking to get the the properties up. And then just name them fizzlers. And that's a fizzler. I'll just quickly check something actually to see if I need to add. I can't remember if they have an output in in the Fizzler for the activator. I'm sure I did. I think we had an activator symbol in the Fizzler. So we'll just double check. Yeah, I knew I did. Why is it using Fire User 1? Oh, I see. Interesting. No, it doesn't need it. It doesn't need it. Okay, I thought it did. Okay, no, it didn't. I can't remember. <laughs> okay, anyway, so we'll, we'll just minimize that again. Go back to the to the map. So we've got the fizzler in place now. So now, because I've changed that, changed changed mind and decided to use this dynamic model, what we need to do is we need to go into the outputs and we need to basically tell this well first of all we'll give it a name so let's let's give this these off so select all these four so that's got all those four selected now and then we just need to give this a name so we'll click in the name and we'll just type fizzler modeled model model underscore model fizzlers underscore model and then apply and then we go into the outputs 
and then this is where it could get a bit tricky actually I've never used this model before, so I'm 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 just going off basic hammer here. <coughs> Actually, we don't need to do it this way. it's got a name okay okay I'm being dumb okay I'm being dumb I'm having a, having a blonde moment even though I'm not blonde <laughs> okay so <clears throat> I tell you what we'll go um, unhide everything so we can see the, the map so we've just unhid so what we'll do is we will ha add a so which was the exit was this the exit I can't remember which was the exit Oh, that's the exit. Okay. Okay. So we will ha add a button over here. Oh, a floor button on the floor. Or we can just, actually, we'll just cheat. We'll just copy and paste this one. So we'll just press a shift and drag it across. And we'll put it in this corner over here. So it looks pretty symmetrical. Because we've already lined it up, we don't need to, because it was already perfectly aligned on the floor, we don't need to redo that again. So we've got a button, so we go to the output, so we can delete this one because we're not using this now, because that was, I just copied and pasted the button. So then what we need to do is we need to go into output, add, on pressed, select the fizzler, and disable. And then we need to add another one, on unpressed, Fizzler, enable. It has to be, you know, obviously. You can mess about with the logic. The logic is very cool in, in Hammer. It's, it's, it's pretty cool, uh, the logic. Uh, now we need to work out how to, how to make these open and close. So what we do is we go into the button again. So also add another output, on pressed. And then just do select these. Sat animation. Cl so disable is close, and then just copy this output, paste, and then just change it from unpressed, air uh, from pressed to unpressed, and then open. Now to check to make sure you've got the right animation names, you just double click on it, go to the model tab, and just make sure that the name is 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 is, is correct. So it's it's closed because sometimes uppercase and lowercase letters in them, so you've got to get it perfectly right to make it work correctly. To make it work. So that's open and close. Okay. Awesome. Oops. As you can see it's it's actually moving now, so we'll just uh, idle it. Okay. Perfect. So that's basically how you do that. So it's actually not that hard to do, <laughs> the models. <laughs> but it, you do need to use a set animation for it because it's got that model has an animation and you've got to tell it to do that animation when it when it gets triggered. So that's 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 very important. So as you can see, we've got a very basic room now. So what we'll do, we'll do a quick compile and we'll have a quick look what it looks like in Portal 2. So we'll just save first, and then we just click File, One Map. I you c and then you can you can do fast compiles, full compiles, uh, you know, low lighting, HDR lighting. I just I just I'm I'm a bad person. I just always do full compiles. <laughs> so we just click go. We shouldn't have any leaks. Oh, I've got a leak. 
Okay, I wonder where the leak's coming from. Not a problem. I thought I fixed I thought I fixed leaks. So we just go to the map and click load point file and that shows that'll show a red a red line in the map somewhere. And it isn't showing. Okay, weird. Why is it not showing? Why isn't it showing? Where's the word? There it is. Oh, okay. What? No? Where was it? Oh, no, it was that, sir. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, interesting. I think I just spotted the problem. That is really strange. I don't know how that happened, to be honest. Well, I copied and pasted, didn't I? So, I suppose it's my own fault. Own fault. Yeah, you know, you can see what I did there. It's this this here. I didn't I didn't do it properly. Okay. Oh, my computer's being a bit derpy now. Okay, no problems, we'll just close hammer. So we just had the first crash. Just had the first hammer crash. No problem, just open it back up. Click now when you get that pop up after a crash. Open. Click date modify to find the map easier. Oh, I was all the way down there. There it is. Okay, open. <sighs> That's pretty funny that I did that. So that means this hull is just this 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 is just totally screwed up. Yeah. There's a problem. I didn't select the I didn't I haven't got the logic in. Yes, I have. No. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, there's. That, oh God, I got confused again. So it's this one here. Yeah. So as you can see, what I need to do is I need to move this down. No, this one up. So here's that fiddly bit that I was talking about. But for saying's sake. <sighs> Sorry about this. Just come here, give me a minute. I'll tell you what, I'll just I'll just quickly pause it. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll just uh fix it. Just bear with me.
cheating again, I'm sorry, but just <laughs> I like to cheat. We'll just open Challenger actually. Oh, why didn't I just do that in the first place? Because that's using the right models. Okay. Perfect. Okay, this should be fine now. I can just basically do this. Are them grouped together? I think they are, aren't they? Yeah. Let's just check that they are there. Departure, yeah. Copy. I'm cheating. I think it was because I changed the model, uh, the, the the instance to to not the destroyed one. It it messed it up somehow. Hey, hang on. It's not there now, is it? All those entities aren't there. Weird. Weird that, isn't it? Maybe it'll be fine now. Yeah, it's fine now. I don't understand what happened. That was it. Was, it wasn't even a problem. I'm, it was some, I'm like, maybe it was hidden. Maybe something happened. Maybe it was a bit buggy. But it's fine. So we, we could, we're running them out. We're compiling them out now. Let me just open portal up. Okay, so so the map's loaded, so here's the portal. So first of all, we'll just change the video to, to borderless. I like borderless as well. It looks cool with no edges. And then what we do is just press the console, so we get the console up in portal. And then go up, type map, and then just the map name that you created. What's the name of it now? Oh, I'm being stupid. Ha! <laughs> I'm being stupid. I just compiled the Challenger one. <laughs> okay, ignore me. Ignore me, ignore me. Okay, so that problem wasn't fixed. It looked exactly the same room then, didn't it? It looked similar. It made me confused. It, okay. So let's just delete this. Because it's causing some problems. And then we'll just cheat. Go back to this one. Select these. Copy. Go back to this one. Paste. Yeah, that'll be a job fix now. It won't be having a problem. I'll be able to compile now. <laughs> Sorry about that little problem. It's because I cheated and stuff by copying and pasting stuff and changing the instances around. Sometimes issues like this happen. It just, just it's just a bit of a pain sometimes, but it's not a problem. Okay, so we're a bit offline, off, off grid now. There we go, perfect. Let's just double check. Yep, all in line, all perfectly in line. Okay, perfect. So let's file, save, and then we can compile the map. 
we've got another leak, typical. Load point fail. Is it the light? How the hell is that leaking? <laughs> no idea. But it's, we can just we can just basically fill the leak in even though it's not leaking. I don't understand why it was leaking. And what we'll do is we'll just make sure and we'll just go to all the other sides and do the same for these. So we just get in that box that was filling up the hole and just we might as well just fill it in correctly. Bigger to stop any other problems. Because this isn't a funk detail, this brush, so it shouldn't be leaking. I don't know why that brush was leaking. Hopefully that will fix that issue. Why is Amma being derpy? Would happen one day in this hit on a Why is it leaking through a normal bloody wall? It makes no sense. Why is it being derpy today for me? This is stupid today. So basically it's saying this fizzlet is leaking. <laughs> that makes no sense. Okay, you know what, I'm just going to stop this recording for a bit and I will finish it off later. And I'll quickly do a quick preview of it as well. I'll, I'll, I'll clip the two clip parts together. Okay, well, thanks for watching and I hope that is useful for you and so on and so forth. And so I'll catch you soon. Okay, welcome back. Sorry, sorry about that quick, that, that, that break I had to make. I had to make a break because uh, I had a few problems. Uh, basically, yeah, I'd, uh, the problem was I used a stu uh, the wrong nose drawer texture by accident. I must have did it by accident. Uh, this no drawer texture, I was using the glass footsteps one. So it made it basically non-solid. So that's why it was kept leaking. But I've fixed it now. So I've just, I've just reselected all the no drawers and, and fixed it. So it compiles fine now. So we just one map and it'll compile. And then we can check what it looks like out in game. <coughs> you can actually build room is not too you know pretty fast when you know what you're doing and how many like this room took me about two about two hours and i've done pretty much uh, you know basic stuff a lot of a lot of the basic stuff lighting everything and the entities and a few puzzle elements so yeah you can actually do quite a quite a lot so what you do just type map in the console map space sp and your map name and then press enter and that'll spawn the map start the map b 
been a bit slow today, isn't it? There we go. And there we have it. We are now in my map. So there's a fizzler. And there's a cube. That disables. Oh, it works. Look. They work. The open and close lock. Isn't that looking cool. Perfect. Okay. Let's just check that again. That looked cool. Yep, that model looks perfectly fine. Okay, so let's go and get the button. The cube. There's a the cube. So if we can put and then we can put this on the fizzler. To stop the fizzler. Like that. Cool. Or oh, what? And that's basically a, a basic a basic map tutorial. In later videos I'll probably do more advanced stuff where it's like more advanced stuff like you know, more complex, complicated puzzles and puzzle elements to for more experienced so so you know, yeah. And if you have any ideas for any 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 you know, any thing you want me to do a tutorial on just let me know in the comments or whatever. Don't forget to please subscribe and so on and so forth. And share, share, share. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hope you hope hope this was very useful or helpful in some way. And see you soon.